Let's talk to Dave Arenberg, the state attorney for Palm Beach County, where this raid took place. Uh, Dave Arenberg, welcome. Thank you for your company. You're obviously the county state attorney. Did you know about this raid before it was carried out? Well, thank you for having me. And I did not. Law enforcement and our office were unaware of this. We were not told in advance. The feds do normally keep things close to the vest, but especially, as you can understand, in a sensitive matter like this, where it would be the first time in our country's history that a former president's home was searched, and it could lead to the first time a former president has ever been charged criminally. Why would a raid like this be carried out in this fashion? Well, I want to uh, take issue with one thing. I would not call it a raid. I call it a search. Uh, the former president calls it a raid because it meets his uh, vision of being this martyr for the MAGA movement. But in reality, it was some plainclothes FBI agents who were escorted on the property by Secret Service agents, and they collected documents. And they had a court order to do so, whereas your reporter said they had to have probable cause that a crime occurred. And there was also probable cause that Mar-a-Lago contained evidence of that crime. Now, another alternative would have been to just issue a subpoena to Donald Trump saying, please uh, turn over these documents. But the Department of Justice obviously believed that Trump would not do so or they didn't trust Trump to turn it over. They would destroy the documents, which is why they sent agents in by surprise to collect it itself. How high up would the order for this search go? Would it be the FBI director, or the attorney general, the president? Who's... Who signs off? Two of the three. It has to go to the FBI director, who was ironically appointed by Donald Trump himself. And it would have to go to the attorney general, who is a longtime former judge and has a reputation of being apolitical uh, as someone who's very deliberative. So this is sort of out of character that he is being this aggressive. But then it has to go to a judge, a member of a different branch of government and they have to there's certain rules in place and by the way if trump wanted to challenge this search warrant he could do so in court if he wanted to release the copy of the search warrant he could do so but he's not doing either of those things because he would prefer to litigate this instead in the court of public opinion do you know um what they were looking for and what they found the items had to be listed in the search warrant and so we are not privy to that. But I cannot imagine that the Department of Justice would seek a search warrant and a judge would allow it to a former unless it involved national security secrets, something that at least pertains to our country's national security. They're not going to go search a former president's home to retrieve love letters written by Kim Jong-un. It's got to be something more serious than that. And it's got to be a violation of the Presidential Records Act that is willful. They wouldn't do this if this was just negligence or an accident. This is something that they are obviously believing is willful, intentional, and could harm our nation's security. And I think they've had enough time for talk. This has been well over a year, and the time for negotiations obviously has ended. What happens next after this search? Well, the FBI is going to review the documents seized, and they're going to determine whether a crime has been committed, and then it goes to the Department of Justice for potential prosecution. Normally, the standard is that whether or not the prosecutors have a good faith basis to get a conviction beyond any reasonable doubt. But since you're talking about a former president, and it will be the first time in our country's history that a former president has been charged criminally, there's a much higher burden. You've got to show pretty much that they got the goods against president. They got to have all their T's crossed and I's dotted, uh, and, and, and I's dotted to know that if they brought this case before a jury, that they would surely get a conviction because otherwise putting the country through this is probably not worth it. Mr. State's Attorney, thank you very much for your time. Dave Arenberg there in Palm Beach in the United States.